Hi, I'm Marnik Vandenbroek from Stand Up Company and today we're going to talk about how to earn attention and trust while driving employer brand projects through your organization. And we're going to do that based on our five-step communication model that we have been using for years in blogs, videos, presentations, boardroom pitches and we recently also gathered all the insights in the Stand Up to Stand Out how to express yourself in the most powerful way book but we're not here to talk about the book we're here to share as much insights in these 14 minutes as possible so let's get the show on the road now if you look at basic communication we tend to come up with a solution first we want to have an answer to every question and it's noble and it's okay and we're trained to do that in our family, in our schooling, in our business, but not everybody wants to listen to your solution, in this case, your ambassadorship program, your employer brand project. Not everybody wants to listen to the solution or take action on that idea of projects if you didn't go through the three steps that come in front of that. And those three steps we're gonna discuss in this video and we're gonna start with your credibility and energy. Now, before you walk into a meeting or you start up an online Zoom call, ask yourself, how am I doing? What is my current mindset? How am I walking in or starting up that call? Rate yourself from one to 10. Is it a nine? Great, you're pumped. You believe in yourself. You believe in your message. You're sending positive energy. It might sound a bit fluffy, but the energy you give is the energy you get and people will start copying your behavior. Even if you haven't said a word, people will sense how convinced you are of your own message. Don't bring traffic, don't bring frustration into the room because it will affect your message. Now, if you add a three or a four, that's okay because in life, not everything is perfect, but ask yourself using the TFD model, think, feel, do, where is this three or four coming from? Is it because I'm feeling stressed? Is it because I'm thinking very negative, negatively about something that happened at work? Did I sit in my car for three hours in traffic, getting all wired up? What is causing that three or four and how can you positively affect that three or four so you can get it up to a seven or a eight before you walk in you don't have to do it there's no obligations but if you look offline people will copy the behavior and definitely online you will lose a lot of energy because you're communicating through screens so you need twice the pumpness to bring over that enthusiasm and that conviction you have for your idea or project so how are you walking in scale yourself from one to ten now let's say you're feeling great, you're an eight and a nine, you're pumped, you believe in your message, you prepped yourself, you are ready to rock that meeting, present that idea to the rest of the organization, get your em employees all fired up for a new project, you're ready to rock. Then it's time for really the first, it's actually the second step, but I also call it the first step because it's the first step when you're actually going to say something. And that's the attention and trust phase. And the attention and trust phase for us at Sandum Company is one of the most important steps in the whole model. That's why we also call this video earning attention and trust while driving employer brand projects through your organization. Because even in your private life and your business life, if there's no attention and trust between your partner, your kids, your colleagues, they will not listen to the solution you're eventually going to come with. So spend a lot of time and earn that attention and trust. But what is trust? Trust is this big buzzword that everybody's talking about. And also this video is such an important step and such an important part of communication. Trust is something we all know is very fragile, but actually is a pretty simple concept. And definitely in this business world, if you're having all offline meetings, trust basically is the more recognition you can create, the more people have the feeling, hey, I resemble you, you look like me, we talk the same, we think the same, the more and the faster you can create a connection. Often it's done by small talk, but in presentations, in stories, in pitches, it's often done with anecdotes. Look at any TED talk, they will start with an anecdote that everybody can relate to. People have been standing in the kitchen, traveled, whatever, and everybody's nodding and smiling with recognition. And what we recognize, we trust. What we trust, we want to give attention. So the more we create that, the more people want to give attention to you and your message. To give you a concrete example, if I do comedy, which comedy routine is related to any form of communication, maybe a bit more jokes, but I start my routine often by just talking about what happened in the region that week, where I'm performing, or what people are doing, or what is hanging up on the walls in the, in the room that I'm at. Because it's something people have seen before, have experienced before, and experienced as positive, something close to home, and they recognize it. 
And because I'm talking about it, they start laughing, they start nodding and like, I know this, I'm thinking the same way. You're talking about something that I've seen before, I recognize it and because I recognize it, I trust it. You are saying it, so I start trusting you and I start giving you attention. Now relating it back to employer branding and driving strategies, projects, ambassador programs, whatever you're doing, driving it through the organization, it comes down for you to create as much experience for your employees and your teams and board members as possible positive experience so people have consciously and subconsciously positive memories not only but interacting with a certain tool with a certain way of working but also with you and the messages that you bring the more people have these positive memories the more they will start recognizing the tooling the ideas what you're saying and you the more they recognize it the more they feel that you have the best interest in them the more they will start trusting you and the more you build that trust, the more attention you will get for yourself, your message, and your project. Now let's say you are pumped. You walked in with a nine, you came prepared, you're convinced of what you're gonna say about your story, about your idea, and you focused your energy on creating that connection first, getting that trust, getting that attention for who you are, resembling your audience, making sure that they want to listen to you even though you're not yet giving their solution. Now if you have that connection, you think, oh, I'm in. I got this, I'm in for the win. It's a necessity. Without that connection, you can't move forward, but that connection doesn't necessarily mean that people are gonna accept your solution and take action on your idea. Why? Because even though you have a connection, it doesn't mean you are looking at the world in the same way. Everybody has their own map in their head, shaped by what we experienced during the day, what we experienced in schooling, family life, and with that map, we look at the world, the business world, the private world, and not everybody has the same map, so we could be looking at the same world, but we were seeing it differently. Now, to give you an example, I have a great connection with my dad. We have that attention and trust, but that doesn't mean that we look at things in the same way. Like for example, I'm a big fan of digital. He's still struggling like figuring out how it all works and if he really needs it. That's a different worldview. And it's really important, definitely when you're working with employees, when you're working in an organization is, your organization will not look at the world in the same way as you do. So you can be super pumped about a certain tool, about a certain strategy, a vision, but that doesn't mean even though your colleagues or your team trust you and wants to give you attention, doesn't mean that they see the same benefit and are as excited about it as you. So the next step, if you have that foundation of intention and trust, is seeing how does my audience look at the world? Is it the same as you? Great, because then you have the energy, you have the attention and trust, and you're looking at the world the same way, so it's easy sailing. You can just give them the solution, give them the call to action, and they will say, Marnik, I'm totally with you. But often that's not the case. So we have to see how are they looking at the world, how is it different as my worldview, and what personal value, and how tangible can I make that value and that world that they are willing to step through the door and say, I'll give you a chance. I'll look at the world you are doing because that personal value, that tangibility that triggered me to maybe change my opinion and change that view on a certain tool, project or idea. Because we always say you're never talking to the company, you're always talking to the person in front of you. So even though you think your project, your strategy, your vision, your solution is the best for your organization or for the client that you're talking to, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person in front of you will agree unless he or she sees that there is some sort of personal value in it that it will benefit their life their professional life that it will help them achieve their goals and of course the company now let's take it back again you see that i do this over and over but i just want to show you like we said in the beginning a lot of people start their communication with the solution and you see how many steps that are before that solution so people actually do something with it. So let's say again, you're pumped, you're convinced, you're enthusiastic, you walk in or you open your Zoom call or whatever communication platform you're using and you focused on attention and trust. You have a connection, you did small talk, you created things that people are like, you're thinking the same, you're talking the same, this is exactly what I'm going through, you understand my world, I understand the personal value, I wanna get that personal value, uh, tell me more, we're looking at that world the same way, I wanna step to that door, you did all that, and then the moment comes, you can actually come with your solution. Your solution is just plain and simple, your idea, your vision, your tooling, your strategy, whatever you wanna communicate, that is what you're gonna talk about right now. Because people are open to it. 
Because people say, I trust you, I wanna give you attention, we're looking at the same way, so now I wanna hear how I'm gonna get that personal value, how I can step into that world that you created for me, and that you do with your solution. And the funny thing is, if you did those three steps right, the credibility, the attention, trust, and the context part, you will have become the solution. And people will no longer, if you then later on come with your call to action, will no longer say, well, I need to do this. You want me to do this. You think this is the best for me? No, they will have the feeling that they themselves want to do it, want to take action on your solution. They want to join you. That's where you want to go for it. And then the last part, and you probably heard me say it a lot throughout this video, people taking action on your ideas, on your projects, whatever you're presenting them, is their call to action. And it might sound very simple, it's the moment that you tell people what to do to get that personal value, to join you in your vision strategy of whatever you're doing, but we often forget it. We often forget our call to action, that people are like, okay, what do we need to do now? Make it very concrete. Or when we're prepping our story, when we're prepping our meeting, when we're prepping our moment that we're gonna come with our communication, we don't know what our call to action is up front, but our call to action is our goal. It's your goal. And if you don't know what your goal is, where you wanna take people, they will definitely not know where you wanna go. And then it goes all over the place. So know up front, what is my goal? What is my call to action? And this is the moment that you're gonna bring it. And you will see, if you did everything right and you became the solution, they will start asking for the call to action. What do I need to do? What do you want from me? How can I help? Those are the sentences you will hear and you know, okay, they're ready to receive my call to action, to get that personal value, to get that solution, and join me in my quest for employer branding everywhere. We always say never walk out with intentions, walk out with a plan, so make sure you know what the plan is and your audience knows what the plan is. So now to wrap it up, we went through all the five elements of our communication model and what we started with was our credibility, our mindset, our energy, what are we bringing? Are we walking in pumped, convinced, enthusiastic, or are we bringing that tree, stress and frustration? Whatever you bring, know it will affect the other people and they will copy your behavior. So let's say you're pumped, you have your credibility, you believe in your story, you're prepped. Then we go to attention and trust. The key to all communication, creating that connection, making sure that people are like, I trust you, I recognize what you're saying, we are the same, you're telling me stuff that I know, that's why I trust you, and now I wanna give you and your message the attention. If you have that foundation, we move to context, and there could, like I said, be some overlap, but we then look at how are these people looking at the world. Is it the same? Great. Is it not? How can I open the door to my world using personal value and opening that door to your world? And once they're looking at the world in the same way, they're trusting you, they're giving your attention, they're copying your energy, you're gonna give them the solution. But the funny thing is if you did it right, you will have become the solution and they want to want to follow you in your project, in your strategy or vision. And that's the moment they will ask and you will also give it to them. You come with your call to action. What do they need to do to go with you in this idea. And if you did that, I guarantee you, you will have successful communication at the coffee machine, in a Zoom call, on a stage, doesn't matter, it's always the same technique. Now this is our call to action. If you wanna know more, because this is just a couple of minutes of insights, but if you wanna know more, like I said in the beginning, just check out the Stand Up to Stand Out, Expressing Yourself in the Most Powerful Way book. It's in paperback, in ebook, on Amazon, available everywhere in your local bookstore and it will go through the five chapters linking to the five elements that we discussed with a lot of practicalities, not just theory, but really showing you example by example. So check it out. This could be like your guide, your manual in any upcoming boardroom meeting, presentation for your team, whatever it is. And we're very convinced of this. It's not a gift. Of course, there are people who are by nature more smooth in communicating and telling stories, but it's not a gift, it's a choice you can learn. So if you focus on these five elements, you will get the results that you want. I hope you liked the video. So if you wanna know more, connect with us on social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, go to standupcompany.com, ask us anything, read the book, and I hope that you will see people take action on your ideas and project in the near future.